Differences seem to be the only thing we see in our world today. Different appearances, different opinions, different cultures and beliefs. They are what define us, what give us each a uniqueness that is the reason our species thrives. But when we are not accepting of these differences, when we refuse to see that our outlook on life is not the only one, many problems can arise. However, I believe there is a simple solution to these problems, but simple does not always mean easy. Yet I believe that when we connect to those different from ourselves, we can open up a path to a more peaceful society. Now, our world is boxed. It's angular, organized, neat, and tidy. Our homes are cubes, and our desks are square, and our minds are filled with boxes. We have one for everything. A box for home, a box for school, a box for this, and a box for that. But why? Why in a world so completely round is everything so overwhelmingly square? Now the answer to this is simple, but the solution, not so much. We as a species tend to separate things because it's just plain easier. Sorting through one box at a time is a whole lot less difficult than going through everything all at once. And sometimes this is okay to do, but the issue begins when we start trying to compartmentalize people. Now, imagine if you were trapped in a box for too long. It's really uncomfortable, and after a while, all sorts of problems arise. The same thing happens within the boxes in our minds. People are not meant to be enclosed by labels as we so often do. We're too complex for that. And similar to when we're trapped in a box in the physical world, when we pack people into, uh, into boxes with others we deem similar and stamp a vague, biased, overgeneralized label on the outside, many problems will arise. For example, the International Journal of Peace Studies has stated that since 2001, alienation between Arab Muslims and North Americans has become painfully acute. Now, this stems, uh, polls have shown that many in the Middle East have uh, think very little of the U.S., and that many U.S. citizens have dubbed Islam as an inherently violent religion, which is 100% false, as peace is actually one of the core concepts of the Islamic faith. Now, these views are stated to stem from many overgeneralized assertions about uh, innate cultural differences, and have only increased as both groups have begun to see these different peoples as the other. Now, this is definitely not the only conflict of this kind in our world today, but it is one of the most prevalent and volatile. To put this into a closer perspective, a few months ago, I was told a horrific story. I was told of a girl whose aunt had been beaten to death in a parking lot with a baseball bat simply for wearing an item of clothing that expressed her Islamic faith. And the worst part of this horrendous story is that not only did the man who committed this crime use the defense that he was protecting his country from terrorists, but that he wasn't punished for it in court. So the reason for a lot of these types of conflicts boils down to one thing, the fact that our world is shrinking. Due to the processes of globalization, um, the way by which every part of the world is becoming more integrated together, many very different cultures are rapidly being tossed together. Uh, this can cause a clash between many very different peoples and encourages competitive cultural and religious geopolitics. Now, this throwing together of different peoples has, be has caused uh, these groups to become very defensive about their identity. And this leads to much of the conflict and sometimes even the violence that often occurs between nations. However, this type of conflict isn't only seen globally. Now, let's see. Where else are many extremely different people thrown together every single day? How about high school? In high school, a lot of different groups are formed between people as they try to uh, figure out where they fit in. Uh, most of you will know these as cliques. And these groups, some of them will refer to conflict um, to prove that their group is somehow better than another. 
and this just isn't true. So don't get me wrong though, having a strong sense of identity is extremely important. In fact, identity is defined as the interrelated set of beliefs that constitutes a relatively stable sense of self and relationship of self to the world. Now I take this to mean that identity is, in simplest truth, the lens through which we see ourselves, others, and the world around us. Therefore, having a strong sense of identity is extremely important. It's when we begin to, see, uh, to think that our identity, our way of seeing things, is the right way that it becomes a problem. So, quick throwback to when we were little kids in preschool and elementary. Do you remember when we did countless lessons and tons of uh, activities on the difference between fact and opinion? Well, Apparently, most people don't remember these lessons, for they believe that their opinion is fact, which is simply not true. Um, well, there is, uh, this is, however, a more conscious kind of bias, one that, we, that can be solved simply by relearning that oh-so-important le lesson that opinions are not facts. Unfortunately, most, con uh, most bias is unconscious, made up of um, associations with positive or negative feelings rather than conscious thoughts. Now, many studies have been conducted to prove this, such as the implicit association test, uh, which studies, uh, which researches the attitudes about many different stereotype traits, such as race, gender, and age. Now, these tests have subjects categorized words and images by pressing a button on either the left or the right side of a computer uh, when presented with a picture of an African American or a European American and either a positive or negative word. Then the reaction times are measured because as the research researchers state, participants will press keys faster when the categories produce cognitive, cognitive consonants rather than dissonance. Thus, someone with an implicit preference for whites will respond faster when European American faces are paired with pleasant words than when African American faces are, pa are paired with uh, good words. And if I completely lost you there, that pretty much boils down to this. When a subject favors one race, they're faster to react because when a, good, um, when a good word and a good face are paired together, to them it just makes more sense. And this is a much more difficult habit to break. But I believe that there is a simple solution to all of the problems I've talked about today, and it is this, connections. Connections from the basis of every aspect of our lives, from school and work and family and friends to science and nature and war. By forming connections and relationships with, with others, we are able to learn more um, about them and maybe even see things from their point of view. And sometimes, all we really need is a new perspective to see things in a completely new, more well-rounded way. So it is my belief that connections are the only way to open up and empty out all those boxes in your mind. Think of them as strings, the link between two different thoughts that ties them together. These strings attach between the boxes in your minds uh, and force them open. They overflow out the top, and the tighter the connection, the closer the strings bring those two thoughts together until eventually, those boxes will tip over, spilling their contents into your mind. And once all of our boxes have been opened up and dumped out, we'll finally be able to see the world as it really is, a giant chaotic jumble of everything that makes it up, held together by the connections that tie it up into the ball we call Earth. This is how our world really is, how we'll be able to see it if we, form, uh, if we just manage to reach out and form connections with others and break open all those boxes constraining our minds. Now, trying to connect with people who are different from ourselves is not going to be easy. It will require a tremendous uh, effort from all parties involved. But I believe, I know, that it will be worth the struggle. Once we get past the fact that, yes, we are all different and unique and will always be that way, and that's okay, maybe we will finally be able to come together as a species in peace. Now, is this thought cliche and far-fetched? Probably. But is it also 100% true and maybe even possible? 
Absolutely. And if all of us connect, understand, and work together, all seven billion of us, who knows what, uh, what will be possible? Thank you.